Have you ever wondered what goes on inside a plane's cockpit in the seconds after takeoff? The acceleration, the climb, the checklist, the coordination, everything has to go exactly right. But what if, just three seconds after lifting off the runway, both engines shut down? That's exactly what happened to Air India Flight 171. And this week, we got the first official answers from the investigators. It began like any other international journey. Air India Flight 171, a Boeing 787-8 Dreamliner, sat on the runway at a Medabad International Airport, fully loaded with passengers. Some were tourists, some were families, others were returning home. Their destination? London, with a short stop in Mumbai. The cabin crew went through their final checks. The engine spooled up, and at 8.14 p.m. local time, the aircraft began its takeoff roll. Within seconds, the Dreamliner lifted into the night sky. But what happened next was not just rare, it was almost unheard of. Just three seconds after liftoff, both of the aircraft's engines, state-of-the-art turbofans built for long-haul reliability, shut down. Completely. No thrust. No time. The plane was barely a few hundred feet off the ground, still heavy with fuel, too slow to climb, and with no altitude to glide. What followed was inevitable and devastating. The aircraft stalled, nosed over, and slammed into the ground just beyond the runway perimeter. The impact was catastrophic. There were no survivors. 260 lives, passengers, crew, flight deck, gone in an instant. News of the crash rocked India and the global aviation community. How could a modern jetliner, flown by a trained crew, simply fall out of the sky during its most routine phase of flight? For months, investigators searched for answers. Was it a system malfunction? Sabotage? Pilot error? Now, the preliminary report has surfaced, and the truth is far stranger and more tragic than anyone expected. At first, investigators searched for the usual suspects. Fuel contamination? No traces. Engine failure? Both power plants had been inspected just weeks prior. Bird strike? Sabotage? System fault? Nothing. Instead, the truth was hiding in plain sight, on the cockpit pedestal, right between the pilots. Two small levers. The fuel control switches. One for each engine. According to India's Aircraft Accident Investigation Bureau, AIB, these switches, which are normally left untouched after engine start, had both been manually moved from run to cutoff. Three seconds after takeoff. Let that sink in. Just as the Dreamliner rotated into the sky, both engines were simultaneously starved of fuel. A move so catastrophic, it's considered an unrecoverable error at low altitude. The aircraft lost thrust. The climb became a stall. And with no power, there was no way back. But what's even more disturbing is what came next. Investigators recovered the cockpit voice recorder, the black box that tells the human side of every crash. In it, they heard one pilot, clearly shocked, ask, Why did you do that? And the reply? I didn't touch anything. Each pilot denied moving the switches. Each believed the other had made a fatal error. And yet, the evidence was irrefutable. Someone in that cockpit moved both switches. And it happened at the worst possible moment. So now the question isn't just what happened. It's why it happened. Was it a mistake? A miscommunication? A mechanical quirk? Or something even deeper? Fatigue? Confusion? Automation overload? As the investigation digs further, what's already clear is this. In a cockpit built for redundancy and safety, one flick of a switch sealed the fate of 260 souls. This wasn't turbulence. This wasn't weather. And it wasn't a mechanical failure either. The fuel control switches, the very ones that starved both engines, are not part of any takeoff checklist. They're not supposed to be touched. Not during taxi. Not during climb. Not ever in flight. They sit on the center pedestal between the captain and first officer. A deliberate location designed to avoid accidental contact. So how did they both get moved, just three seconds after liftoff? That's the question investigators are now obsessing over. And the answers they're exploring go beyond hardware. This is no longer about the machine. It's about the humans flying it. Was it muscle memory from a previous aircraft type? Did someone mistake them for another set of switches, like fuel crossfeeds or pack controls? Was a checklist misread? Or worse, skipped altogether? Investigators are also exploring a more uncomfortable possibility cockpit design itself. Because sometimes, even in modern jets, the layout can confuse, especially under pressure. 
Were the switches too close to another control? Was lighting a factor? Were procedures clear enough to prevent such an error? At this stage, mechanical failure is ruled out. That leaves only three variables. Human behavior, training, and cockpit ergonomics. Whatever the cause, one thing is chillingly clear. This wasn't just a mistake. It was a collapse in cockpit discipline at the single most critical phase of flight. And in aviation, that margin for error? It's measured in seconds. Right now, several Air India crew members are grounded. Internal investigations are underway. And across the industry, eyes are locked on what comes next. Boeing is cooperating with Indian authorities. The full final report from the Aircraft Accident Investigation Bureau is expected later this year. But even before it arrives, the ripples from this tragedy are already shaking the aviation world. Because this incident didn't just expose a cockpit error, it cracked open bigger questions, questions that go beyond one airline, one crew, or one airplane. Backhand index pointing right are today's cockpits too complex or not intuitive enough. Backhand index pointing right have pilots become over-reliant on automation, muscle memory, and standard flows at the cost of situational awareness? Backhand index pointing right, and perhaps most crucially, are we truly preparing crews to handle stress in those rare, high-stakes moments? Because in the first few seconds after takeoff, everything happens fast. You don't get to pause. You don't get to rewind. There's no checklist for shock. No procedure for panic. Just instincts. Just training. And a flight deck that has to function under pressure, flawlessly. What happened on flight AI-171 was more than an accident. It was a moment where every safeguard failed at once. And the lessons learned here could reshape how future pilots are trained, how cockpits are designed, and how human factors are understood in the jet age. Because in aviation, the smallest action can become the difference between climb and catastrophe. In the final seconds before impact, the crew fought to bring the Dreamliner back to life. The ram air turbine was deployed. The auxiliary power unit kicked in. And engine one showed signs of relighting. But engine two never came back. Still dangerously low and losing speed, the aircraft clipped the edge of a medical college hostel. Then, impact. A fireball engulfed parts of five buildings. Walls collapsed. Flames tore through dorm rooms. Residents on the ground didn't even know a plane was falling from the sky until it was already too late. 260 people on board lost their lives. 19 more died on the ground. Only one passenger survived. A 40-year-old British citizen named Vishwaskama Ramesh, now the lone witness to a crash no one was meant to survive. In seconds, a modern Dreamliner became the site of one of India's deadliest aviation tragedies. But even as the flames were put out, the questions were just beginning. Sometimes, tragedy doesn't arrive unannounced. Sometimes, it whispers years in advance, and no one listens. In 2018, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration issued a quiet advisory. Not a red alert. Not a grounded fleet. Just a bulletin. It warned that some Boeing aircraft might have a fuel control switch with a weak locking mechanism. A small flaw. The kind you'd overlook, unless it fails at the worst possible time. The advisory wasn't binding. Airlines weren't required to inspect or replace the part. And like many carriers, Air India didn't act on it. After all, the switch had never been a problem. On paper, the system worked. The Dreamliner that crashed had no open defects. Its airworthiness certificate was valid. Maintenance had been done. Nothing had raised alarms. But that switch, it had been replaced twice in six years. Quietly, without any known link to the accident until now. With no evidence of sabotage and no sign of mechanical failure, investigators are now staring at the one question no one wants to answer. Did the switch fail because of human error or because it was always vulnerable? It's hard to imagine that a part so simple, barely the size of a soda cap, could bring down a $200 million aircraft. But aviation doesn't forgive assumptions. Every screw, every system, every checklist exists for a reason. And when something slips through the cracks, the consequences are written in fire. If the locking mechanism was indeed weak, if those switches could be nudged or bumped or misread under pressure, then this crash wasn't just tragic. It was avoidable. That's what haunts this story. That the first fatal crash of a 787 might have been prevented if a warning in a 2018 document had been taken seriously. But it wasn't. And now, 260 lives later, 
the world is left asking, how many more warnings are still hiding in plain sight? Sometimes, the smallest motion can change everything. In this case, two switches, flipped at the wrong time, turned a routine takeoff into a national tragedy. We'll continue following the investigation into Air India Flight 171 right here. If you found this story important or eye-opening, give it a share, and don't forget to subscribe for more real stories from the skies every week. Thanks for watching, and as always, fly safe.